Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode number 18 of the Eavesdrop Podcast. Ashley, you made it to the top 20. The Heck first yeah. 20. That's amazing, actually. Yeah. Barely legal. 18. Yeah. It makes sense. That's how we're starting the podcast. It's I have, amazing. I have like little nicknames for all the like top placings and blackouts. So it's like barely legal's 18, 17 is rated R, 16 sweet 16. Get to the MySpace top eight, you're like... Didn't, uh, I think Diesel had a serious like that on Optic Nation very early on where it Underage. was... Underage. Underage. Yeah. So what the, the, the premise of that was that you, ha- it was, it's a game of headquarters? No, it, yeah, it was like headquarters or we did it in Domination, I think we did a couple episodes. Yeah, and then episodes. You, you had to keep the enemy to... Under 18. Under or 18. Or I think it was 21, maybe the drinking age. So that's a little Under less eight, yeah. weird. I don't know. I don't know, but I, and then, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it could have gotten weird. Because what if you got them to like a seven point? Yeah, no, what do yeah. You, what do you call that? Never mind. Uh, <laughs> welcome, Ashley. Thank you for stopping by. Yeah, thank um, you. Thanks for having I've, me. I've wanted to to do the Eavesdrop podcast with you for a long time because you were part of the original Optic Hour podcast. Yeah. And you were a, 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 like a... Like a steady host of that, you were all on every single one. I think. Uh, I think I think I was on quite a few of them. I've been on like the regular Optic podcast that we did from the Scuff House. Um, I've done a little bit of my own podcast, and I'm down to like. Do you still do that podcast with? Um, uh, often, often on. We're in like a hiatus right now, you know. So we you're might doing, come back with a little. You're re-brand. doing the flycast thing. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna come. Well, if we do come back, it'll be like we're staying back. So that's yeah. why I don't want to like. Do commit it, to it yeah. do you guys do it uh over the it's over the yeah internet, so right? it kind of sucks person? that like you have to do it over skype where is she where's amanda from she's from canada and so yeah so we can't like i don't know like we've done an IRL, irl one before um and i think she's gonna come i think she's coming down here for the fort worth event so we're definitely gonna like do one yeah um so i'm, I'm excited about that but i love podcasts so i'm glad you had me on yeah I, I i like them too and i get mad when other people like when i watch like I watch your podcast. I listen to some of the, like her movie credits. Critics. Yeah. Uh, what's what's her show called? Jedi. We're talking about uh, Je- Amanda the Jedi. Amanda the, the Jedi. Way. Shout out to her. My duo, dude. My yeah. main duo. So um, she she does like movie reviews, or she does. I forget what the name's called of the channel. It's like Jedi Films or something like that. Yeah. I I'm, I get mad at Hutch because he had a really really good one called uh, Netflix and Chill. Yeah. No no no. Podcast and chill. Yeah. Not Netflix and Netflix and chill is something that everybody <laughs> I was uses. gonna say that's Yeah, yeah. So podcast and chill. And what he did is that he criticized movie, him and this guy named Act of Bunny Foo Foo. Cool name. Yeah. And I, I got mad when they stopped doing it and I would send them DMs separately and I'd be like, yo, what the what the hell is the problem? Where where's the podcast? And he would blame Hutch. And then I would DM him <laughs> and then I would sit I would share the 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 DMs with them so they could get mad at each like, other. Hello. Because I wanted to sneak in and be Hutch's duo for that, for the movie review. We watched so many movies, and he's got such a strong opinion about absolutely everything. Yeah. And I do too, but I often try to be a little bit more. You like know, see both sides type yeah. of thing or ride the fence a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but, but also I try to trigger him a little bit, so I know that that's why he doesn't want to do it. <laughs> but uh, but it'd be it'd be really good. Uh, so the name of your podcast was Powered Down, and it'll still be called that. But we're just gonna come back with a little bit, of freshen it up a little bit, and start. Just so the, part, the Powered Down podcast that you that you were a, a, a part. Of, what is what was the premise of it? So um, just like this, we just have yeah, a just a, just a lot of conversation. We would have guests sometimes, but not always, and it would just be talking about like pop culture, current events, movies, or stuff that like you know we're interested in, or just like big topics. Like sometimes like something will happen where it's like, oh my god, I have a huge opinion on that. And that's one thing, like, Jedi is super, like, passionate and opinionated, kind of like Hutch's, and I'm really more, like, laid back, yeah. and, like, I don't have a, like, people make fun of me for it, but I don't really have, like, strong opinions about much, because I, I usually am like, well, I could see one. Well, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I kind of see both sides of it, and like, people call me a fence sitter all the time, but yeah, I'm just chill. I know. I, I try to see everything from both sides. I, the thing is, is that I can argue both sides yeah. at any given point on any given topic, no matter how bad it is you know yeah. i mean i won't get into the politics of it but uh, i can fight on both sides so just because i have common sense and i can see that there's you know well, i think what, it's like you, you can emphasize with people a lot more like i could see why some people are upset about you know a b or c but then i could see the other side where they're like well that's messed up and i'm like oh yeah i could see that but i don't i hardly get like super passionate about stuff so when you do see me like kind of swing i guess then that's how you know like i'm serious yeah 
Um, all right, so you you moved down here with us yep. Uh, yep. In, in, in the whole move. Mm -hmm. Originally, what the plan was, and, and at one point or another, I remember telling you, it's like, hey, you need to be coming out to all the events, so let me pay mm -hmm. for your flight and yeah, yeah. see if you can go to them. You, you sketched out on a couple of them, just even one. after I bought the just flights. One. It was, it was really one. rude. It was one. Which one? <laughs> uh, I can't remember which one it was. I think it was like Champs, like in Orlando for the first time. Uh -huh. And I was like... You just didn't want to go? No, I hate flying. You know that. Oh, I talked about yeah. it when I was on this podcast before. I was like, I hate po I hate flying. I don't know why. Well, let, let me ask you. Let me ask you about that because I, you know, at first I was a little bit like apprehensive about, but I've flown so much in the last ten years yeah. that I've just become like immune to it so much so that I sit down my thing, put my headset on, and then immediately I'm out. I pass out quicker than than anybody else to the point to where one time I woke up and I said, I'm like, did we land? And we hadn't even taken off. Oh, that's shit. how good of rest I got in those three minutes. <laughs> so I, I'm sure that there's a lot of people. And if you're if you're watching, whether it's on YouTube, on iTunes, podcast, every everywhere where podcasts are syndicated from SoundCloud to Stitcher to Spotify to Google Podcasts, and again, like I said, iTunes. And if you're watching on YouTube, let me know if you guys are also afraid of flying. Now, the question about that is, what is it about flying that the schedule? How much is the same way? It's not really the whole actual being like i actually think like the mechanics behind it and everything is like amazing because the technology like allows us to literally fly in a metal tube at you know thirty thousand feet i think that's pretty cool i just like don't like being stuck somewhere especially with a big group of people i don't know if it's big groups of people or like just being like trapped and i can't leave for like four hours or however long and then just like i don't know i get and the thing is about it that pisses me off is like i used to do it a lot like i think during call of duty ghost i was going to like most of the events I was flying out to like IW or wherever like sledgehammer like I was going all these places um because I had just a lot of opportunities and then like I had to do it so much in one month that like I don't know I just had a, a few bad experiences that like made me hate it and then I waited a while I didn't have anything to do and then I went to go fly again I had like a crazy panic attack I don't know if you ever had like an actual panic attack but it's not like you sit there and you work yourself up into it it's like it hits you like your body's like yo I hate you right now and I don't know it's super weird like I can't I definitely like I've talked about it before so like I've, I made a video talking about it and a lot of people were like yo I know what you're talking about that's happened to me before and I'm like I wish I could be normal <laughs> yeah but what what is it like because it, it's obviously not a mental because you 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 can rationalize that you're gonna be fine no yeah it's like I can't describe it really like I can't I've gotten like one thing that has helped is I talked to a doctor about it and they prescribe me some chill pills literally so they help me like <laughs> they help me chill you know I could like it, it's weird I could take them and I literally like feel my chest like get heavier and I'm like I'm kind of tired yeah and so yeah that helps a little bit but I still hate it I'll do it if I have to but I hate it so you're happy that DFW is right around the corner and that you yeah. don't have to fly to that yeah have you well, did you go to any events last year I went to I think I went to Dallas and I went to NOLA I didn't where go to like champs where you have to fly New Orleans yeah yeah. Or did you drive to New Orleans? Because it's not that far. It's like seven uh, no, hours. No, it's like from six here. hours or six and a half hours, whatever okay. it was. It was easy. So you did drive? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so you didn't even fly? Mm -hmm. An hour flight? Yup. Because you're afraid of flying? Yup. You know what's crazy about this? A scumpy and Nate Shot are both afraid of flying. Really? Why are they afraid? Are they afraid of like the plane crashing or they just don't like. Yeah. No, I, I think it's literally crashing. And I, don't, I haven't heard it from Nate Shot as much as I've heard it from Seth. Um, but I think I think with them it's it's almost like a convenient use of I'm afraid of flying. Uh, you know when they don't want to go do something, like say it's in, and I'm not talking about nature. I'm talking about Seth, for example. When he was in California and he didn't want to come to Dallas to do like, like a photo shoot or something. or something, he would say he's like, no, I can't do it. I'm afraid of flying. And then I'm like, all right, cool. I'm gonna send somebody out there to do it. And then he'd be like, no, I don't got time. I'm like, all right. So <laughs> so now we know what what the deal is. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I I, I just. I don't know. I, originally, at first, I was afraid of flying, but then after that, I just, I just completely went, went away with it. I, I think just, if I just like quit avoiding it and just force myself to do it, yeah, I'll get a little better with it. Especially now that I have like medication, and I like, I don't really have to do it that often. So kind of rationalizing it that way is like, yeah. it's not that often. It's like your um, odds are slimmer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because like, how many planes? Do we know how many planes crash uh, on a yearly basis? Dude, it's basis? not high. I'm going to Google that while you talk. I was listening to, like, uh, I think it was, like, Joe Rogan had Travis Barker on, and, you know, he was in that, like, it was, like, a small plane that crashed, and, like, two of his best friends died, and, like, the pilots uh, passed away as well. It's, like, super sad, traumatic event that happened. 
and he's a touring musician, you know, at different times of the year. And so like he was saying that he will drive like crazy far distances to get on. Like he'll take a boat to the UK, like to tour. Like it's freaking crazy to me. So there is a there's an average of five small plane crashes a year. Dang. That makes sense. I actually, in Minnesota, before I like moved down here, I lived right near like a small like landing strip airfield. And so I'd see all kinds of those little planes come in. And there was like a couple times where like they had a bad landing or like just shit was and you going would see down. It? No, I never saw one, but I could see them like approaching and mm-hmm. then turning towards the runway. It was actually pretty cool. I don't know. I, I, I could never do a propeller plane personally. Anyway, Dude, yeah. uh, Ashley. Yeah. I always like to start the eavesdrop podcast with a simple question. Okay. And then it sets the conversation up for the rest of the podcast. Right on. Who are you today? I am Ashley. I, I don't know. I consider myself like a gamer, like first. Because like when I think about it, like I've been drawn to gaming since I can remember. Like since the first time I game, like anytime I was somewhere that had an arcade, I wanted to play. Like I, if the new console came out, like probably couldn't get it. But if I could, you know, I'd play it. And then like my friends down the street had a different console, go play theirs. Like I've just always been drawn to games. So I consider myself like a gamer. Uh, I guess I've been in the community a long time. I don't know what to call myself. Like I feel like saying influencer is dumb, mm-hmm. streamer just Why? feels weird. Why do you think that? A I lot don't of people, know. A lot of people don't, I don't mind it. I, I could care less whether yeah. it, somebody calls it an influencer or not. I, I could care less. But why, why don't you like it? I don't know. It kind of just makes it feel like that's what I'm there to do. When really, like, I kind of came in, and just like you, like, I came in early. Yeah. Before, like, I knew what Twitch would be or that I would get money from doing YouTube. And so I always just considered myself, like, a gamer who liked to make entertainment. And even, like, as a kid, I had, like, a little handheld little video camera. And I would make, like, horror movies with my cousins. Or I would make you know, different, like, videos. Like, literally, I wish I could find them, but I would make, like, it's just been a passion for a long time. So to mix the two, I don't know, I don't know what to call it, but yeah, that's who I am. I like, I love games, bro. That's it? Yeah. Uh, me too. But um, f- but for me, it's uh, it, it's a little bit different because, like you, we, when did you start making videos on YouTube? Um, It was 2010, so it was, like, I'd actually been linked like an optic gaming video by one of my friends because I had this like little group of fl- uh, friends that I would play Modern Warfare 2 with and we would like chat and stuff. It was like kind of just the first time I had even like an online community of like buddies, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so when, I don't know, we would just chill and they would like, th- one one chick like linked an optic video and I was like, yo, that's sick. And then I started like, uh, funny enough, like I would listen to Hutch's commentaries or see Nanners and see his gameplays and just see like, that there's people that also love the same game as much as me, but also love bringing like their personality to it. And so I was like, that is dope. So I got the ter- like worst capture card of all time. Cause I was like- Which one, the Dazzle? The- no, it was worse than that. If you could believe it was called the Easy Cap. And it had like, yeah, yeah. And it had like, you. Ha- I had to, it cost more to buy the cords that I needed to like extend it than it, it did for the capture card. And it was like 480p was the best it did. Mm-hmm. And it, it looked terrible. And that's if you, like, found the perfect settings. I spent, like, hours doing it. It was crazy. So that, like, kind of got me started doing YouTube and just, like, doing gaming content was something I really enjoyed. Um, yeah, I don't know. I really – I just found my passion, like, in in video making. And then, like, when streaming kind of became big, that was, like, something I immediately was gravitating to. Like, remember Nate Shot streaming, like, Mono Warfare 3 back in the day? That's when he, like, really kind of – started getting into that and I was like that is so cool so I like saved up for a computer that could do it I upgraded my mom's internet and I was like let's do this and I I said to my mom um I said give me like six months to just try this and we'll see what happens and she did I mean I started to like pay her some rent but yeah yeah how, how would you because you you told her it's like I'm not gonna go work I'm gonna do this for yeah. like, at that, were you out of school at that time yeah I was out of school I didn't have uh, I'd like think I'd had like a part-time job here and there like I would just pick up like random gigs here and there um, but I there was like I think it was like right as black ops 2 was about to come out I was working like a seasonal job and I was like I would be at that job and I'll be thinking I could be making like a sick video right now or I could be like streaming right now like why am I not doing that and I, anything in life that I've like been drawn to like I've almost always felt like it was ended up being successful yeah so whatever like I was just drawn to do it and I said mom like just give me this time we'll see what happens and if it doesn't happen then I'll do a b and c you know what I mean so and then it just started working like start snowballing kind of thing yeah that's uh that's cool I, I always liked your story because you came in 
I mean, they, they even made a video about the on your show called The Last Survivor. Mm -hmm. What was it called? Yeah, it was called The Last Survivor. It was a video that Hitch actually made. It's up on my channel. Um, it's actually a really good video about like my kind of story, like my origin story, I guess. You're like narrating or being interviewed for parts of it. And I'm like kind of explaining to people because I feel like a lot of like newer like fans, they might not have like known even the history of the sniper team or the history of like where some of our content creators came from. And I've just kind of weathered each yeah. storm. <laughs> and it's, I don't know, it's been insane to see the, uh, just the, the different like transition periods that Optic has been through. Yeah. Like, and, and being, like I know you've obviously been there the whole time, but like seeing it kind of as a person who's going through it, but also like not making any decisions has really like been interesting. Yeah, because you were, you went through all of them, Yeah. right? Uh, first we dropped the girl team. Yeah. For some reason, and, and again, you know, we, we started we started this YouTube thing way back in 2009, 2010, mm -hmm. where, you know, having a girls team was was like trend setting. Yeah, almost. it was brand new. It it never brand been new. done before. And, and, and to and to credit and to credit Diesel for coming up with the ideas like we should have a girls team, you know, pick up the best, you know, the best. Uh, girl snipers uh, of, of Call of Duty and then go from there, mm -hmm. uh, have them create content, this, that, and the other. And then also we had a PS3. Like everything in those days was all about trial and error and, and ex experimenting on YouTube back then was like the most beautiful thing because there was no, no real, one, there was no monetization happening. Yeah. So anything that you did was simply to see if you could get more more viewers mm -hmm. and more subscribers. Yeah. So at that point, you know, your livelihood wasn't on the line where you didn't have to where you couldn't veer away from what works and yeah. what, what creates a steady income for you. So you can just go try something new to see if that hits. Yeah, exactly. Because a lot of people, uh, I'll give you an example, people that do Minecraft back in the day, that, that their channels was only Minecraft videos. Mm -hmm. It would be very, very difficult for them to justify them, you know, steering away from a different formula to see if they can gain a bigger traction by including other games into their programming yeah and at the time when when you're making that money and the time when you're that's your livelihood you don't want to mess with the formula yeah you just keep doing what works yeah i've noticed like a lot of youtubers like kind of get in this little niche or this trend and they just do it and i i i don't know i kind of got like a little sick of it a little bit like trying to just continue doing the same thing i, I don't know how some of them do it like, yeah. especially like with minecraft and stuff like that no offense like i'm yeah. sure Maybe they love it. Like maybe they're just truly passionate, but also like, how do you change it up? Yeah, for me, it was it's, it's always been very simple. Like Call of Duty is always gonna be my favorite game. Yeah. So changing that up has never even been an option of mine. Yeah. You know, very luckily, Modern Warfare Remastered came out at the same time as IW because I didn't like IW, so I got to play Modern Warfare Remastered for that entire season. But at the same time, like I like Minecraft. Yeah. A person like me only likes one thing, and that's that, and it doesn't veer away. Yeah. So me giving Minecraft a shot. And then me getting into that whole, like, Minecraft to me, or the, or the style of Minecraft that I play was always a, a, um, a go back to the earliest beginnings of human... Like survival. Yeah, survival. Like, yeah, and I've always been into survival outdoors and all that stuff. That's just my thing. Yeah. So for me, it was different. And, and that captivated, like, my imagination. And, and, and I mean this. It captivated my imagination. My, like, I felt like a kid playing that game. I yeah. felt like everything was on the line when I was doing that. You know, growing, you know, remembering, remembering to grow my wheat and, and all that yeah. stuff was, was crazy. Um, anyway, so back then we, we went into the girl team. And then, I mean, very short after we started the girl team, there was drama within. Dude, it was terrible. How like, did you feel? Because I, I, listen, it, I, I've always said that the secret for you, like, surviving, well, not only are you a likable person, but you just, like you said, I'm too you're, reserved. You're just, I'm good. I'm yeah, good like with I'm, the drama. I'm chill. I was a little bit older, t not by much, but a little bit older than some of those girls. And they were just like, Wait, I don't know. how old were they? they? I think a couple of them were like maybe 16, 17. And they just, I don't know. I think anytime you get like younger girls or just like people in a group trying to like decide who's the captain and it's like i i think we got like recruited to do like game battles mm -hmm. and like we weren't even doing that like yeah. we were just playing pubs together and not yeah. recording it and i was like this is useless mm -hmm. so i started to like kind of veer off and do my own thing because i was like well i'm not gonna screw this chance up they can whatever sit and search and destroy all night i'm gonna go like do free for all try to make a commentary with my crappy capture card and I just focused on that. I was like, you know, I didn't see, because they didn't want to play game battles, so I didn't see it. 
because you that's what you guys wanted and i was like they're not they don't want to do it or mm-hmm. they're not and so i was like whatever dude and then like yeah they were like fighting and stuff and i think like it got back to like diesel i think and he was like or and you and you guys were like yeah this is not worth it it's not worth the trouble yeah well the thing is it's like <sighs> Q- QSL was there? Yeah, dude, she was so good, bro. Was she? She was catfish though. That's why I remember, like. What do you mean she was catfish? She was catfish. So there was two of them that was catfish. Skittles and QSL were not who they were saying they were in their pictures. Uh huh. Which is like whatever. It was 2010. Catfishing was still like possible, I guess. But I don't remember you, their faces at all. I don't even think I've ever seen them. Nah, I, I just they, remember they their had name. Like, pictures. Uh huh. But didn't yeah, know you that. probably just remember like their Skype name or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. or the gamer tag. Gamer tag. But um, there was a time where like you guys were like, okay, guys, we're about to hit 100k on Optic Nation. Everyone make a little quick thank you video and like everybody, even if they had like a dollar store webcam, like made one, yeah, yeah. right? And so. And then, like, when it came time, like, they were just not doing it. And then they're like, well, we're going to leave. We don't want to be in the team anymore. And yeah. I was like, that's super sus. And yeah. then they got kicked. So I think that was part of the big drama was, like, they just didn't want to, like, yeah. do it. I, no. This is the first time I hear that they're catfish. That they oh, were really? Well, I never told them. I, they, I never confirmed it. Oh, I, I confirmed it with one of them. But I never, like, it just seemed obvious to me that they were not who they were saying. They yeah, were. to me it was... What I mean, what was which happening? is like fine. I mean, it was it was 2010, man. Like it was only 10 years ago almost, but like stuff was way different then. Yeah, and look, if you're if you're out there in, in this very moment, you are catfishing. What that means is you're pretending to be someone you're not. Yeah. Just listen. Do yourself a favor. You're better than whoever you're pretending to be. Just give yourself a chance and for real and be that. And still yeah. some confidence in yourself. Yeah. And it's it's amazing to me because like there's like a way to facetime now like there's you just can't escape it like every phone has like a workable camera yeah so i don't know how like shows like catfish are still going Going. you know what i mean i mean they're kind of more focused into like the drama it seems like of like people just being shady but yeah dude like it's not because i remember i remember talking to to the team the entire girls team yeah and asking them like girls like i don't even understand i was like i think it's like guys i'm like hey listen we don't have time. Like, we're about to hit 100,000. We're a big deal on the internet. No, yeah, we were, like, exploding. Like, this is our moment. And, you know, everybody can benefit from this if we just... So all this, he said, she said, or she said, she said stuff. Like, I don't have time for it personally. Yeah. So I get rid of everybody except yeah. for you and Jewel. No, right? Jewel or, wasn't in at the time. Okay. So there was other girls that joined down the line. Yeah. Um, a little bit after that, but as far as like a girls team that was gonna do like GBs, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. that that core was like wiped pretty much. What do you think? Let me let me. What do you, what do you think it is right now that's holding back the the girl only esports community? Because I see all these excellent like uh, like groups of of women that get together, business women that get together and 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 try to push forward the. Mm-hmm you know, the, the, the female esports movement. What do you think is it? Because unlike any other sport, you know, you don't have that sort I think, of that sort of and I and I don't wanna like diss my own sex, so I'm gonna be careful, but my disinterest in competing in any of that is just it's kind of time consuming and also like I just don't really I'm not saying that girls are only like this because you wouldn't believe like I've sat with groups of guys and heard them like, you know, gossip way worse than some chicks that I've been around. But like yeah. Just t- girls teams, especially if the girls are younger, I've noticed is a little more difficult to kind of get along with, or there's just more like cattiness to team changes that I've noticed in my experience. Like all I can do is speak from my experience. And yeah. I think like, as far as like female only leagues, I think it's definitely possible, but also people, um, I, I see both sides. This is where I get called offensive because I see like, okay, it's really good. Like it brings awareness to females gaming. It's freaking awesome. Especially when there's like, I'm more of a fan of like ladies nights or like, you know, kind of showcasing different yeah. like, women in that way. Um, instead of no, like explain a ladies nights because. So like basically like, I think like Fortnite has done it most recently where they have like, I competed in one, one back when I played Fortnite for like two months, but like, uh, it, it's basically like a big lobby full of like girls like playing against each other. And it's kind of is a good way to bring awareness to like their stream or just like women gaming in general. I think Fortnite yeah. has done like an amazing job Incredible of getting job. more, more women out there. Um, but as far as having like a league, it's like, well, there's totally nothing wrong or like, like in UFC, like a girl can't fight a guy obviously, or like, you know, NBA, WNBA, like it's just, you can't compete mm-hmm. like, male versus female but with video games like you can so i see the other side of it where it's like 
well, why would they separate them? Why is there segregation? That doesn't make any sense because there's no like physical advantage that either sex really has. So I see both sides of it. I think like both can be beneficial, but I would love like my, in my perfect world, like there's a girl that just comes out of nowhere and is like the, the next like dashy, only she's a chick. You know what I mean? Like young girl who's like really ridiculous at the game and people like give her a chance and she gets in that position and, and kills it. Yeah. You know, I, I agree, and I very, I've always said this, I think I just repeated this, like, recently, when, um, at the beginning of, uh, when we moved into the house, mm-hmm. the, in 2013, the, up, the, the 60-50, I, I always said, I'm like, oh my god, like, I have the, you know, a very good marketable team, the only thing that would make this better is if we had, like, the best girl, Call of Duty girl player ever, yeah. and it was better than one of you guys so I could replace, you know, because that would have been, been amazing. Yeah, that would have... Uh, not only would it have brought... Look, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a father of a daughter, so I, I always keep that in the back of my head. And look, uh, now more than ever, I'm mm-hmm. not going to say that before I had her, I had the same sort of mentality that did it, whether it's fair or it isn't fair, it's just, you know, it, it is what it is. But now that I have, you know, her future, not in my hands, but, like... It, in in this sort of industry i would like to have to create sort of an environment to where she could have a path to greatness right. whether it's on their own league or mm-hmm. on a on a league that you know that that's good enough because uh let, let me give you this example there's there's uh there's collegiate esports mm-hmm. there's high school esports at any point i i think they're both flawed uh concepts personally uh, there's way there's definitely ways to make them uh a, a feasible idea to succeed mm-hmm. in a way in esports. Yeah. But if you're good enough at the age of 17, the way Scumpy was, he's just going to go pro and play for the pros. Yeah. He's going to get the contract. You know, Dash is 19. If he was in college right now, what was he going to be playing Call of Duty only against, like, he'd be above and beyond that sort of level. Yeah. So, so you know, th- th- that's just one thing. But just like that, if you have a female league, right, that, that sort of, is creative. Let's just use Call of Duty for an example. Yeah. And you just see who the best girls are, right? And right. then you create a team up of that. And then you make them compete, you know, the traditional way in the MLG, you know, bullpen and, and, mm-hmm. and, and make them work their way out. I think that there's like such a massive opportunity there that nobody's exploring. I mean, I would love to help if if the it's, thing is. Uh, it's, I think it's more difficult. So people ask me this uh, all the time on my stream. They're like, why aren't there any pro girl players and i'm mm-hmm. like well if you think about it think about how hard it is for anybody any guy to become pro yeah like it is so you're talking about the top one percent of the top one percent of call of duty players okay and then think of how many like females are playing call of duty right it's it's not as many as like fortnite right because you have like you have some dumb skilled chicks at fortnite because oh, yeah. there's just so many more girls playing yeah, fortnite yeah, yeah. um but anyway like back to call of duty like there's just a little less people or females playing call of duty and then even less like trying to go pro or, you know, you never know. Like, I think there's, I think that a girl definitely could. It's just more rare. Yeah. Like, it's even hard for, like, a new guy or a new team to come out of nowhere. True. And so I think, like, just statistically speaking, it's a little more difficult. But I do think, like, when there is that, like, girl version of Dashi or girl version of Scump, when she comes along, she's going to make bucket loads, dude. Because everyone's yeah. going to want to, like, it's so unique. I have a contract ready. Yeah. You know, it's ready to go. Um and, and, and yeah, again, look look how unfair that is. Just, I'm ready it to is. go, right? It is. It is unfair, I, but it's also like, look at Ronda. Look at yeah, what she did exactly. for the sport of UFC, though. Exactly, dude. It, it wasn't that she was getting handed out these things. It's like she she reshaped mm-hmm. UFC as a whole. Literally. Like, at, literally as a whole because, you know, it's, a, it's, it's obviously a male-dominated sport because mm-hmm. it's violent. But then she's the she's kind of person that, that came in. And sort of opened up the eyes. And, and yeah, like UFC gave her a, a, a big, big check yeah. because she was a chick. But at the same time, it, it was good for the business. It was good for the sport. It was good for women yeah. in the sport and outside of the sport that it just, it was like everybody won. And I think there will be the same sort of scenario in this case. I agree. I'll you be know. her manager. Like, let's do it. Yeah. You, re- <laughs> you think you could manage? Oh, I think I could. I yeah. think like I have, I have so much time in this industry that i feel like if i were to just like stop what i'm doing it would almost be like a waste of all this like knowledge and connections that i've made over time um so yeah i don't know i and i don't think it's unfair to say like if a girl came out of nowhere and had the skill and was yeah. marketable like she'd crush more than like yeah anybody the else. unfairness comes here okay if if, if i'm in that position mm-hmm. the unfairness comes here this girl comes in and she's and she's at the exact same level 
essay uh, uh, flame sword. Right. Okay. Same level. Who do I pick? You know, if if, if flame sword happens to be the 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 lowest skilled player in 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 the Fortnite team. Why wouldn't I pick her who's going to bring a more marketable, yeah. uh, you know, situation for me, right? Not only that, but you're, you're also helping an entire, you know, community by, by shining the spotlight on that something. That's where the unfairness comes. Because yeah. at that point, I'm picking her. And how fair is it for her to be picked just because she's a woman, right? right? I mean, it kind of is. There's, I, there's even stuff that, like, in this, like, 10 years here where I feel like I've just been picked because I'm a girl. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, cool, thanks for the opportunity. Like, obviously, I'm going to take it. But I have gotten that vibe before where it's like, okay, yeah, you're the you're the token chick or, like, you're the girl who's going to get, yeah. like, invited out with all these other guys. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. But, at the, like, at the same time, like, why wouldn't you take advantage of that? Like, there's nothing wrong with being a woman or anybody. Yeah. And I think, like, that type of favoritism happens a lot. Even if it's, it's, like, two guys. One's extremely marketable and, like, you know, pleasant. And then one's, like, toxic on Twitter and toxic just in general. Like, who are you going to pick? Yeah. Not yeah. to, like, compare toxicity to, like, chicks. No. I, I, I get it. I, I got into an argument on Twitter because... Oh, no. It was... Do you do that sometimes? I, I do that all the time. I, I, I feel as though it's, like, my... Back. It's, like, my duty to to let someone know that they're being a moron. Mm-hmm. Just, just in case they didn't know so I can help them not be that. Dude, but you can't, like... You can't smell yourself. Like, stupid yeah. people don't know they're stupid, Hex. Yeah. They don't. I know, but I'm, look, if I smell and you tell me, hey, you need deodorant, I'll be like, oh, thank you. Yeah. I don't smell no more. That's, that's, that's the sort of rationale that's behind my, uh, my, my thought know. when I'm letting people know that they're morons. But I got into, into this argument. I wanted to bring this up because you just got into sort of a, not a hot topic, but with, with the inclusion Yeah, tweet. yeah. I made but like a tweet. Let, yeah, hold on. Yeah, you we'll, go we'll get to that first. one. Because mine was about inclusion as well. Mm-hmm. The... the the esports industry awards in London right. created a panel of judges, and all of the all of the, the majority of the panel. I don't even remember who was on the panel, but it was they were all dudes, yeah, and they're all white dudes. And somebody made a comment like, "Oh, this is esports or lack of inclusion in esports." And I'm thinking to myself, you know, how unfair is that to somebody like like uh, I'll say Adam Apicella? How mm-hmm. unfair is that Adam Apicella, who's been doing esports like with his hands, years, dude. twenty? 20. 20 years. And for somebody to be like, well, we should put a, a, a woman in there or a Mexican guy in there instead of that. And then I start to think, and then I started getting so I'm like, if, if anybody, if I'm ever going to be picked for anything, I want to be picked for that one something for my merits, yeah. for my experience and for my knowledge in, in, a, in, in a specific, you know, uh, in a specific, you know, sector or whatever. Yeah. I don't want to be picked because I'm I'm a male Mexican. Right. You know, I don't like want, you're, yeah. yeah. I had no choice in being this. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I had a choice in being an expert in something. And I had the choice in working as hard as I did to become an expert at something. Yeah. I'd rather be picked for my expertise and knowledge in something than just because I was born into this skin. Yeah. You know? So in, in, in the whole, and, and then it, it became like this massive, like, like argument. And I'm thinking, I'm like, man, they're, they're, they're roasting. Like they didn't choose to be white males. Yeah. They chose to be, they chose to be in esports and they chose to work harder than anybody else in esports to get to a position to be that. And then on the other high, on the other hand, how would you feel? Let's say you, you're a woman. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put you, Ashley, in this panel just because you're a woman like we need over a this over this expert. Like we need you to go stand up there because you're a chick. Yeah. And I'm like, like it's like I said, like I have been, I haven't been like told that, but like I felt that vibe where I'm like, oh, this is kind of like weird, you know? Yeah. And, and, it sucks because like there are like things that I'm really talented at and then like I don't feel like everybody has overlooked that but when they do it does feel like oh okay well I guess I'll just try my do my best and show my talents yeah if you're gonna put me up here I'm gonna do well but like I don't know it's a it's a crooked line for sure yeah so tell me about the the inclusion tweet. so I made this tweet man and it's kind of even a fence sittery tweet like some people were like I don't understand what she means um they just aren't good at reading comprehension i guess <laughs> but i if you guys saw like apex legends just came out yep. incredible game i actually can't even believe we haven't talked about it yet um yeah. but that came out huge and the only way i could see this is making sense is if they're trying to build like story or lore with the characters and, yeah because none of them from what i could tell are from titanfall one or yeah. two but maybe they're trying something down the line you never know but they came out and said that 25 percent of the playable like characters that you get are lgbtq mm-hmm and obviously, if you guys don't know, like, I'm kind of gay. So 
You got your full. <laughs> yeah, full gay. <laughs> Love Lady Gaga. If you want to get married, let me know. Just kidding. <laughs> Is that your plug or everything? Yeah. <laughs> oh god. She's like the perfect wing woman too at the yeah, at the bar. Yeah, with, ask, with uh, the guys. ask the boys. Yeah, I'll I'll help you out. <laughs> I'm the I'm the buffer, okay? I'll help you the buffer. But anyway, um so I felt like I don't know, I've and I've felt this before too, like there, this is a marketing tactic that they're doing, right? Their game yeah. just came out. And people, I think, who aren't gay or don't really care too much about gay people see this as, well, you're putting this on me and I don't like that. You're just doing this kind of as we're saying, like as a token gesture. Like, yeah. look, the gays are in there too. And, and, it's a, and it's a sign of inclusion, right? But it's hard to like, I don't know, for me, like I feel not really that great when they do that. Like, there's no reason for these characters to have, like, a sexuality right now. I didn't even think about it. Right. Like, you don't think, like, and maybe, like, like me, if they just said nothing, and I see that girl, I'm like, she's gay. I know she's gay. But then if they came out, she's straight, I'd be like, you ruined it. Yeah. You know, not, not saying that they're ruining anything by saying these characters are, like, yeah. gay. But, like, they're kind of just doing it as, like, a gesture. Um, and I don't feel it's necessary. Like, as somebody who is I in agree. that sector, like, or is in is in that community, like, I just don't see it as necessary. Um, but however, maybe they're, like, planning a love story. Like, I don't know if you've ever played the game Life is Strange, but the characters in that, I guess, are, like, perceived as, like, gay or whatever. Um, and I think, like, that makes sense because there's a story, you're going through the story mode, and you can choose your own, like, way or whatever. That makes sense to me. But just to, like, come out and say, oh, yeah, these guys are, like, you know, some of them are gay. Like, on the other hand, I see the other side of it. Like, there's inclusion. I like that, you know, maybe it's normalizing it for people. Yeah. Maybe, like, like when you play now, you're like, oh, yeah, that's the gay, for, the gay guy in the group or the yeah. gay character or the gay friend. Like, I think that being gay is so normal to me yeah. that, like, it shouldn't be made a big deal of. But, you know, maybe this helps people who aren't in the community just see that, like, is the visibly that they're there i don't yeah. know i can't like pick a side too hard on it i guess i'm i'm, I'm the i'm same at, at no point like so all the whole week that that apex came out i was playing it i was enjoying the shit out of it it's mm -hmm. an amazing game yeah how quickly they did it we can get into that later but uh, when they said it's like oh yeah this you know the character bloodhound that i pick is doesn't have it's not doesn't have a a gender or yeah he's like gender it's neutral a maybe yeah or? gender neutral them there i mean H hutch oh, went yeah, through the, them there. oh yeah. i didn't i didn't see hutch go into all that but. yeah he he did and he explained it all down and and i and i get it I, absolutely but there was no point in in them doing that aside from inclusion thing you know awesome yeah that they're normalizing it like you said it's, it's a part of everyday life agreed right but there was no point in 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 it just feels forced, and people don't like being forced into anything. As a as somebody who's from that community, I don't like that we're like, like to me, being gay is so normal. Like if your neighbor's gay, like oh hey, he's gay, yeah. whatever. There shouldn't be a big deal out of it. He shouldn't have to put a sign out there on his house or put you know some big announcement. Hey, gay everybody, like nobody should care who who dates. You know what I mean? And so especially when there's no storyline, I just don't get it. It just seems like a like a PR gesture. Yeah. And it is. I mean, look at the the Gillette thing. The mm -hmm. the messaging behind the whole boys will be boys. Absolutely, it, yes. Let's let's get the messaging out the right way. But they it, it, that was a marketing tactic. Mm -hmm. They don't give a fuck. Like Nike, for example, with with Colin Kaepernick and, yeah. and it, like look, I understand. You know, I understand that that you want to be you want to take a stand and all that. But it was marketing, right? Yeah. It's all driven like behind you're commercializing dollars. like people trying to you know not get like hated on i guess yeah. and i think i'm gonna give you the, the most perfect example and i discussed it this morning with my sister-in-law she bought a coffee that was organic mm -hmm. or everything about it was organic and then i think about it I'm like, yeah but you're not taking into account that you're still utilizing fossil fuels to run the factory that prints and does this look it's in a cardboard box what about the trees uh you know it, the, the, the whole nine yards yeah right Vegans who eat with plastic forks and plastic plates, <laughs> like I get it, right? But you're never gonna be able to go the full way. Absolutely, let's start to 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 together make a difference, but not at the expense of, like these are all marketing, yeah, ploys. Like, why does every box now have like gluten free or like kind of gluten free or yeah. organic? It's like, advertising. Organic it's a, it's a different toilet way. paper. It's a, 
it's it's a different way to sell something yeah. by changing something, removing something. Yeah. But it 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 all circles around the bottom line, and it's all advertisement. And I don't know if if Apex, you know, meant to do that or wanted to do that. Maybe in the in in their heart of hearts, it was all about inclusion. Yeah. It was. Well, I think I think it could be. I think like the decision to announce it so soon, rather than waiting down the line, was I guess a good one if they're gonna do that. Uh, Who asked? But yeah, like I never like let people's characters be their characters. Like if you are a gay guy and you're playing as a guy, you're like, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Do people see their characters as like straight or gay? I don't even know. I didn't. Do. I picked. A, I don't even I, think I, about it. I picked it. a robot. And I, I, the, look, I don't even I picked a robot. I picked Bloodhound. I picked like I never thought I'm like, oh, I wonder if they like dudes or if they like girls. Yeah. If they like dudes, I can't be that dude. Well, I, yeah. I never think that way. No, I never, I would never think that either. And in that, like, instance, I guess, like, wouldn't gay people be, like, feeling uncomfortable playing straight people? They're like, this is too normal. I don't want to do that. Like, yeah. I don't know. They just, I don't understand that in games. Like, unless there's a serious storyline that they could be building up to, we don't know. Um, I don't know. On one hand, I like, I like inclusion and I like gay being seen as normal, yeah. right? Obviously. Um, but I also don't like feeling like it's a marketing tactic or just like a nod. I don't know. It just feels like yeah. weird. Yeah, I uh, I like UFC for example. There's there's a uh, there's like the, there's a lot of of uh, of that sort of like not, I don't even want to say inclusion because it's just a community that happens to be fighters, right. you know. Right. And and for me, it was like the acceptance of that just makes it a little bit more normal and i and i am with normalizing that because it is a part of of, of the yeah. everyday life but when it is so in your face that you just i don't know if you're just trying to get to piss people off who aren't you know yeah. in this who aren't living in this day and age or so living 20 years behind but i just don't get it same thing happens with like you know with, with mexicans and 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 right. la, la, latin la, lat, latinos mm -hmm. um but i just don't get it i i i'd rather I'd rather live in a world where people are taking as a human. Yeah. And that's that. Like, I, I think, yeah, it's it's all about being, like, a human being. Like, you don't want to feel like you're just a ploy, I guess. Yeah. And I think... I would hate, again, I would hate to have... T I would hate to have been put in a spot because of the skin that I'm in instead of for the merits that, I've, that, 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 that I am, who I am. Yeah. Um, all right. I think, I think we hit that uh, enough. We're going to go on a quick commercial break. Uh, and by that, I mean that I am here to promote to you guys my number one sponsor for the Hex Quarters, Seagate. Seagate, as you guys know, is the solution to all of your storage needs, especially if you are playing on a console. As you know, the amount of memory that it takes to download all of these new games are taxing on your, on your, P, on your PlayStation. So much so that the more more storage that you put onto it, the harder it is for your computer or for more for your PlayStation or Xbox to run efficiently. So Ashley, welcome. Here you go. I brought to you a Oh, thank you. Yeah, a two terabyte PlayStation Seagate external hard drive. So you can save thank all of the you. all of the memories that you need to say. You say you had one already, right? I have one, yeah, but it's not the two terabyte and it's actually like your console. Like I have a lot of games. So So MacWeldon.com, as you guys know, they create one of the highest quality fabric apparel that you guys can experience out there from pajamas all the way down to t-shirts all the way down to underwear and i'm talking about underwear they have a line of silver underwear which is pretty much a, a an underwear that reduces odor by you know removing the germs of so creating sort of this ecosystem where the germ can't live so therefore it's not stinky you can go to macweldon.com to experience the shopping experience yourself and just know that it, it, it they're, they're so confident they're so confident in the in the in the creations that they do that you can buy a pair of underwear and then say, you know what, I don't want to wear this no more. Hit them back up, get a refund, and you don't even have to send the dirty ass underwear back. You can just wear them for the rest of your life, and they won't even know. So if you do want to go, you can get 20% off by using code eavesdrop. So again, it's MacWeldon.com. Code eavesdrop at the end of your shopping experience, one of the best ones that you're ever gonna experience, and get 20% off. Get clean underwear. Good feeling underwear, comfortable, get some pajamas, that's what I got. I got pajama socks and underwear because what else do I need when I'm sitting around playing and making videos and sitting around typing emails? Nothing but that. So again, shopwellin.com is where you go and you type in eavesdrop for 20% off. And our new sponsor, Mint Mobile, have been using them for the last uh, week. I use it more for uh, Hotspot, but I did give Judith the Batmobile. This is the Batmobile. If this rings, I pick up it every single time. Right now, you can get three months 
of eight gigabytes of 4G LTE by going to mintmobile.com forward slash hex and you can get it for $20, it's a limited time offer, okay? But you gotta remember one thing, there's a lot of things in life that are just wrong. Carpet and bathrooms, one of them. Chunky style milk, what the heck is that? And then lastly, of course, eating peanut butter with your fingers and not a spoon. Don't be a savage, do the right thing. And last but not least, one of the most wrong things that I've ever experienced, okay? It's gross, pineapple on pizza, that's just not the thing. But the worst thing that there is, is paying way too much for your phone bill. If you're a teenager, if you're in college, if you're pinching pennies, or if you're watching your budget, right now, like I said, you can get three months unlimited plan of eight gigabytes of 4G LTE service nationwide. So for a limited time, you can get three months for $20, as I just mentioned, I'll repeat it just in case you didn't hear me the first time, eight gigabytes of 4G LTE service nationwide. As I said, it's a limited time, so you gotta act quick. You gotta go to mintmobile.com forward slash X. That's it, that's all you go, you sign up, make it easy, pick your plan and get going because that sort of deal doesn't come along very often. <laughs> do you play more more games than? I do. I, I mainly stick with Call of Duty, but there's like a lot of other releases that I try to like hit. Super obsessed with Red Dead Redemption 2 still right now. Uh, Resident Evil 2, the little remake just came out, so I'm into that. And then like, I might freak around and try some farming simulator. I heard they have like yeah. an esports league coming out for that. Not that I want to compete, but I was like, that's so weird. That must be a sick game. So I try to like mix it up. Like I'm mainly a COD person, but I, I definitely like mixing it up. And now like with Apex Legends, like I'm definitely trying to dive into that. It? Yeah, I've played it. I haven't played it a lot. I haven't got that like addiction feeling yet, but I can feel it. Like the better I get, the more I'm like, oh of yeah. Course. Yeah. Yeah. I've always said that you're the, the games aren't addicted as much as how good you are at that game that becomes mm -hmm. addicting. Yeah. Right. Because you've you've played basketball and you were all right at it. You've played this and that. And and you know, being talented at something is the addiction, is what pushes you to yeah. to, to the next level. It wasn't like I didn't I, w I never drew anything. I never drew trees. I never drew anything. But it wasn't until I wanted to impress a girl that I started to draw letters and mm -hmm. like draw her a picture. Um, I never knew that I was going to be good at graffiti or that I was going to be an artist in that sense. It, it took that small little twitch of the key that made it. And again, I wasn't addicted to graffiti. I was just addicted at the fact that I wasn't good at drawing trees, but I was amazing at drawing letters. Right. And I think it's the same. It, it, it applies to everything. If Because everybody has a talent. Everybody in the mm -hmm. world is talented at something. For real. Right? But nobody gets to know. Like, think about this. You could be the best piano player in the world. Mm -hmm. But if you've never tried to play the piano or applied yourself to be a piano player, you will never know. So there is an abundance of just wasted talent on a daily basis all across the world that people just don't know that they're wasting talent. Yeah. That's why like you have to do just what you're drawn to. Like like I was saying earlier, like anything that I've felt like compelled to do, they're just natural, like and you're good at it. So I think like, I don't know, I feel bad, I guess, for people that like don't feel that about mm -hmm. something. I don't know. I think... If you weren't doing this, what do you think you'd be doing? God, I don't even know. See, like, when people ask me that, I'm like, God, I don't even know because, like, I wasn't really, like, happy before I was, like, doing... You know, I probably would have, like, went to college and got a degree to do some job that I don't really want to do. But, like, I just think that anybody who, who can should follow their passion. I think everybody can in some way. Let's say you still have to work your 48-hour-a-week job or whatever. You can still find time to do something that's important to you, so... How do you think, like, if people don't know their passion, how do you think that they find it? They don't. That's what I'm saying. Years and years, hours and hours, minutes and minutes, every single day, every single week, month, year gets lost mm -hmm. because you don't know what you're good at. Um, if I, I, I always go back to the one very specific moment when Judith and I were at Costco or, yeah, we're at Costco and there was a sale on, on Xbox 360 mm -hmm. that came with Call of Duty as a bundle. And yeah. I look at her and I'm like, I'm like, oh, we had just moved into our apartment. My, well, my yeah, our apartment, our first apartment, 2004. Dang. Yeah, it was in 2004. I was 24 years old. Um, well, it was 2005 because that's when Call of Duty came out. Anyway, I, I look at her and I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm going to get this Xbox for, for the, you know, for, for the, for my, for my apartment. Yeah. And then she's like, really? You play video games? And I'm like. Yeah, I think so. And then she's like, "No, I, I mean, don't. Just get something else. You, you're not a you're not an indoor guy. You fish. Yeah. You paint graffiti. You uh, you're an outdoors guy. You play basketball. You go. You you're not an indoor guy. So mm -hmm. no good. Had I said, "Yeah, baby, you're right. Yeah, screw it. I won't get it. Think about that. I That's never crazy. played Call of Duty. 
I, I continued to work at. Had you, you know, like played games before that? Like yeah, I mean in high there? school. In high school, I played uh, Zelda and Resident Evil One. Those okay. are the games that I vividly remember playing. I remember being introduced to SOCOM online gaming through SOCOM with uh, my, my my friend Mario, who who just moved here and he helps me with the office. That was dope. Um, but that's it. Like aside from that, like I don't remember playing any video games that said, you know what, I'm a gamer. Yeah. I, I never had that as a kid. Played Mario Brothers, but you know I would. I didn't. I only had one game because we lived in Juarez and we didn't have the means. Mm -hmm. You know, that was, that was a year's worth of savings for my parents to be able to get that for my, my sister and I. But I always go to, to that moment. My, my talent, I, you know, is to help and manage other people, help, help other people become, you know, right. be good at what they do by facilitating, yeah. by worrying about the boring shit for them to concentrate on that. Mm -hmm. I would have never known that that was my talent. I would have never known that I'm a good manager of, of people. Like, if, what if you just, like, didn't do it that day at Costco. You're like, whatever, that's what I'm saying. Don't care. That's what I'm saying. What if I, what if I, I, I become so hard headed and so, so ingrained in my head that I have to be a, a, a professional Call of Duty player that I just focus on that. And when my brother says, "Hey, we should make YouTube videos," I look at him. I'm like, I'm like, no, that's a waste of time. We have to focus on one thing to be the only good at one thing. You can't be good at multiple things. Was that like Tomb's idea? Was yeah. he like, "Yo, we should post"? Yeah, he said like, we should make videos like Chris. Is what he said. You know what I'm saying? Is that sort of is those sort of moments that always always bring me back to the fact that there are millions of people out there, everybody watching right now who isn't doing what they love to do, that they're that they have a talent that they're not yeah. that they're not. Yeah, you could discover it like that. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure like you were like like you said with the graffiti thing, it doesn't have to just be one thing that you're fixated on, but like people discover different passions all the time. Similar to like kind of that story, like I think I referenced this in the optic book or whatever, but. I was playing Call of Duty, and you know that like group of people that I told you like linked an optic video, and that kind of like helped me checking out a bunch of different other videos. Um, I was playing free for all one night. I didn't talk to anybody online. I just pretty much played free for all by myself. That's how I feel like I got like good because yeah. I just was obsessed with like beating everybody else in the lobby. It was like the original BR. I'm just kidding, but like I really liked like being the best in the lobby like over and over and over again. And I found like I didn't have. I think I had like a gender neutral name. I was like my name was Awesome O. Like the robot from South Park, and I, I found this I found this I found this chick in my free for all lobby, and she was pretty good. And her name was Mistress. And I was like, oh, that's a girl. Like I've never had like a girly gamer tag, so yeah. she didn't know. But I hit her up. I was like, yo, just saying, like finding a girl at this time was like finding a unicorn, like online, yeah. in, especially in Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I messaged her. I was like, yo, you're really good. Like add me to this play. And then like she introduced me to all these people. That introduced me to all these people. That introduced me to you. That introduced me to this whole thing. And I'm like, what if? My internet was out that night. What if I decided not to play after work that day? What if I just didn't win or like message her even? Like what would have, I don't know. I don't know if I would have maybe found the stuff before. Yeah. Because like the only like YouTube video that I'd watched up to that point that was Call of Duty was like Sandy Ravage. Yeah. So. Sandy Ravage, Randy Savage. Yeah. No, Sandy Ravage. After Aren't Randy Aren't they the same Savage. person? No. Randy, yes, they are. Randy Savage is like that guy from WWF who's like. No, I know. brother. Yeah, but yeah. he but he used to Sandy Sandy Ravage. Who I, yeah, I, I yeah. just played with him like last month. He yeah. still plays with Hutch. Yeah, he's, he's still around. He's, and, and he's, I saw I watch his stream. And he's fucking good. Yeah, I mean he's always been good. Period. Like above. No, average. he's he's gnarly at yeah. BRs. I used to oh, watch his yeah, H1 yeah. stream. He won the the Twitch Invitational for H1 last last year. Wait, what? Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, he beat Karma. He beat uh, Doctor Disrespect. He beat fucking everyone. Oh, wait, I do remember that at TwitchCon. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Anyways, but he used to have this series where he was Sandy Ravage and Randy Savage. Like, he would wait, flip them. what? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, during I just the remember, days. I just remember him, like, showing Beast gameplay and then, like, all the little yeah. Duke Nukem sounds. You know, so, yeah, I'm a, look, I know, I know, look, I know I was, I'm going to sound weird right now, but I remember watching wrestling, and I know who Randy Savage is, but yeah. I always associated Randy Savage with Sandy Ravage. Dude, yeah. That's crazy. It's crazy how that how that changes. Um, for me, the uh, the 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 thing that hurts me the most is when you know that someone is so talented, and if they just listened yeah. to what you have to say, like the amount of so. There's this guy. There's this graffiti writer right now that that I found, and and he's like awesome. He's good at. It. I mean, but the, like I've I've grown I've grown up in the last thirty years. I've grown up next to. About 20 years. I've grown up next to like one of the most talented graffiti writers in the world, my best friend Omens. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this dude's like a, a celebrated graffiti writer. He's like, he's, he's way, 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 way the fuck up there. 
He's like in the top one percent, the top one percent. Like he's really good, right? And and it's really difficult to say. Well, how, well, what do you mean? You know, art is art, and it's it's subjective. And how does that make him the best or whatever, or, or one of the best at that? But it, it, there is there is that separation in in art and music. You kind and of have like a reputation after a while too, right? Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so I found this dude, and he's really really good at characters. And I and I DM'd him, and I'm like, yo, make you know, I need you to do this. And he's like, cool. I paid him. I paid him like I, I think I don't know, however much. But then. I said, I'm like, dude, this is nasty. I'm like, I, I have a project for you. Let's let's work on a project together. Mm-hmm. It, you know, it it pays thousands of dollars. I'll pay you thousands of dollars for you to help me do this one project. And he said, Oh, dude, um, I don't have time. I have work. And this, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, I understand if if you know, he's a family man. I understand that separating himself from this sort of you know job that pays for the bills is mm-hmm. something. But at the same time, I'm like, man. If somebody came to me with an opportunity to play video games or to do graffiti for a living yeah. or draw for a living, I'm going to do that. The amount of freedom that you have when you do and work for yourself is 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 on parallel and that's what life should be. Yeah. And I know that a lot of people are 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 like like I was, you know, for 10 to 15 years working in corporate America that you just can't get out of that rat race. You just yeah. can't because it's of hard. responsibilities. But you know, if, if there was one thing that I could tell anybody is if, if they take the moment to mm-hmm. say, you know what, fuck those two hours of sleep, fuck those two hours of decompression at the end of the night after work, you know, yeah, I'm, I might not see my family for an extra hour tonight, but you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna do this for me. Yeah. The life would change for the better because there is nothing, nothing more beautiful than living a life where freedom is freedom. Yeah, like you know? carving like, your own path. Yeah, and... It always surprises me that when you come to somebody with that sort of opportunity, they're just like, "Yeah, and it's like I, I don't, I don't think I can." And I, and it would be really easy for me to tell them the path. I'm like, "Dude, all right, check this out. This is what we're gonna do. You're gonna help me with this project, and from this, we're gonna develop this, and then from this, we're gonna develop this, and this could be, could become this, or could become that. And you know, you'll be good. You'll be doing art for a living. You can travel the world painting fucking walls wherever the fuck you want, as yeah. long as you get the projects done. Which should be nothing to somebody like you who's just that that good at something." And this applies to like not just art; it applies to to everything, like everything. in the world, right? Yeah. And they just choose the other way, and it happens with content creators on, the, on, on like, a daily basis. Like picking the safe, the safe route, which yeah. like I mean, I've never like had like a family or like somebody to provide for, so like I get it. But at the same time, like carving your own path, like if you have an opportunity to do it, yeah, even if it's a side gig, you know, do it, man, because you never freaking know. I mean, think about this, right? I, I used to work at uh, at in the mortgage industry, and then after after work, I would go home and play Call of Duty, mm-hmm. okay? I would sacrifice sleep, I would play Call of Duty, make a video. And I made videos for two years, like you have, mm-hmm. for maybe one year, but I made videos for two years without any money Dude, being yeah, made. it's like, we had no idea, and, and that's the thing now, is I'm like, people asking me about starting up with content creation, and I'm like, I don't even know how to tell you, because like, when I started, it was pure passion now like everyone can see the path that these other twitch streamers have taken everyone can see the path that the youtubers take yeah. and kind of do like the, all the similar style like videos and yeah. streams or the similar style like emotes or style streams and it's like i don't know man it's it's a pretty clear cut but when we started it was just like nobody knew pure passion yeah, yeah. we're just kind of shooting our shot in the dark and i think like i don't know i just any anyone in my life that has like an opportunity to like just go like you have to do it yeah and and uh and it's double edged sword because yes way back if if I knew what I know now if you knew what you knew now about content creation oh, yeah. when we first started it'd be a different world mm-hmm. right but at the same time now that you have all these like success stories now that you have this blueprint of what it is to that, that it takes to become uh, an an esports superstar or or a you know YouTube or Twitch superstar right. or even a YouTuber that doesn't necessarily like, do do anything. The double-edged sword is that now that everybody knows the formula, there's so many people that the chances of you getting to the top are just minimal, right? They're almost non-existent because you're, at the time, think about how many people were around when we were around. Oh, dude, you got them like one hand or like, or at least the big people. Yeah. You'd be like, oh yeah, watch a scene in his video. There's Hutch. Speaking of, are you super sad that they like deleted all those videos? Machinima? Yeah. I am. I'm going to tell you why I'm, I'm, I'm sad. Because if, had, had they had they sent out in a... Okay, I'm, I just mumbled there. But had they sent out a memo to mm-hmm. all the content creators who have ever created any sort of... Had they made a video, had they posted a tweet that said, Guys, we are about to delete 
all of the videos that we have ever had in in our yeah. in our network. You have a week. I would have gone in there and read, you know, downloaded all my top five kill cams. It changed my life. Yeah. This series. You just think that it's going to be there. Yeah, because it, it says not only that, but Machinima, when we signed the contracts, it said the content that you create, although it will live in our in our uh, in our network, it's yours. The content created or uploaded to Machinima is yours and yours alone. Yeah. Right? Like we're only monetizing it and we're only and we're splitting the monetization, but the content itself belongs to you. So for them to delete something that belongs to me mm-hmm. felt a little bit bullshitty, you know, yeah. because I, I, I created a lot of content and, and and for me it was such an important part of my life because it changed my life for the better. Yeah. I I wish I would have had the opportunity to, to, to download some of that. Yeah. You know? I think I had like a couple uploads like through Optic, like the because you guys, or we had yeah. the premiere director spot, so yeah. I had, had a couple of videos up there, and God, I don't even remember what they were right now, but I wish I like had them, you know? Yeah. So they're kind of like a little memento from like that time. Top five kill caps is a piece of Call of Duty history yeah. that is gone now. Big you had Dominator, yeah, you had Dominator's 10 million view sniper montage, followed by Dietrich's is 4 million, well, his, okay, 6, 4, um... It was just a lot, man. A lot of history. A lot of Minecraft history. Yeah. Minecraft's explosion. Birth. Yeah, it came from that that sort of era. And for them to just delete it off of nowhere, it's it's super, super, super whack. Because why don't why don't you just make it private? Why don't you make all your videos yeah. private? Why don't you make all, why don't you unlist all of your videos? I, I I'm I'm personally upset because I dedicated hours and weeks and days hours, days, and weeks into top five kill cams. And I'm talking about, I would go, I would sit down on a Saturday morning and, and at my mom's house, I would bring my laptop um, from my house and then I would just sit there and then go through every single submission to Dude, find- how many did you have like a week? Was it like just hundreds oh, yeah, thousands, of like- thousands. And they send you like a two piece and you're like, God dang it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, one would be so whack and I would just be like, fuck. And then I would find the, the one-offs where it's like, like not even a good shot but the reaction of the kid was so good that i just wanted to upload that yeah. separately to to uh to my channel i it, it uh it, it it was a lot of work yeah I, I, like thousands of submissions and i would sit there and i would sift through let's say 50 to find the the fifth best yeah. one right and then what i would do is i would sift through let's say uh, a whole day, let's say I spent three hours looking at clips, and then I would finally pick ones that are good, mm-hmm. and then I'll be like, all right, out of these, which ones could be a number one spot? And then I'll put number one folder, number two folder, number three folder, number four folder, number five for the top fives. And then on the top five, I would just grab a random one, drop it in there, grab number four. Another, Dang, so yeah. you had it like archived already. Yeah, and, 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 and it's annoying, and it's it sucks that all those hours of work to create one piece of content is gone. Yeah, and 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 that's what I hate about about that. It, it, it like, really upset me. I didn't even think to like down because you just if it's on YouTube, you just assume like in twenty years when I want to watch like some dumb video that I made, yeah. you know, recently or some something funny, yeah. like, am I going to be able to just have the link? Should I back up all my stuff now? Like, yeah. I don't know. You know, one of the uh, originally, and I know that I'm not doing this. Like, so vlogging for me and 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 uh, what's his name, uh, Gary Gary V said he's like yeah you know it's cool that i get to go back and see you know what what i said back in the day and what i'm saying right now because it's archived on youtube yeah but what's cool about all everything that i'm doing is that my 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 grandson is gonna anytime he wonders what grandpa was like back in the day he gets to go watch that yeah if i could see what my grandparents were like or what parent what my dad was when he was young yeah you know that'd be amazing to watch as, as his son that'd be amazing to watch that sort of having sort access of to that's crazy yeah. like, it, it, i don't know like home videos were like kind of big with my family yeah. so like capturing stuff mm-hmm. as we're growing but like it's so different now because your actual like thoughts are put out there your reaction to stuff is put out there and yeah. so for like your kids or even just like your friends or to show somebody something like i don't know i think I think that they have to keep it up if it's YouTube, but yeah. if the like individual channel believes it, then I don't know. I can't believe they didn't warn everybody. Yeah, that is that's, look, and Machinima, like many businesses, have had this sort of like indicator that when you when you when you sort of have that option to grow to the next level, you it always comes at a cost. Mm-hmm. And for them, it came to the cost of. And look, I'm I'm talking as a third as a, as a, as a spectator. I, I haven't talked to anybody about this, but. From a spectator's perspective, it was when they started to, I don't know, to to not 
Think about Respawn. Think about Mr. Sark, yeah. C. Anderson Hodge. Legendary content. Yeah, legendary content. And it wasn't until I, I don't even remember what the, what the deals was, but it, when they started to separate and, and and not include them in the new world order, which mm. was uh, the the new Machinima, that's when I think that they started to to sort of decline. Um, and it sucks because had they taken had they I don't even know if they took good or bad care of them, but. In my opinion, if they would have looked at that talent and said, wow, we have something magical here. Let's do Double anything down. and everything. Oh, yeah, on what's happening here. Yeah. Like, awesome. Let's do that. Because, um, look, I, I don't know where, uh, you know, Sark still does uh, YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. Amazing YouTube. Yeah, Amazingly produced. Yeah, he does, like, above and beyond. Like, yeah. I've caught a couple of them. And I'm like, like, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then C9 is obviously legendary. Uh, Hutch, legendary. And then everybody that was that, that came from there that was, like, so good at it. I mean... I don't know. It's such a good thing. I I I, I can't believe they did that. I I'm, know. I'm really really upset at that. That's sad. Like the, I, I'd forgotten about it until you brought it up. To be honest, I because know. I was mad for about a week, Dang. and I talked to Hutch, and I'm like, God damn it, man! Like that's bullshit. That you know, Cap Hutch. Yeah. Uh, like all those those are interviews, dude. That yeah. I would like like I'm sure we were on that, or, or someone would want to like if they were on that, go back and listen to that. Like what yeah. what was I saying in an interview in 2010 or whatever? Yeah, it's it's crazy. Well. The double-edged sword there too, right? Yeah, because true. because if you were to catch me in an interview in you know back when I was in high school, mm-hmm. you would see that my vernacular happens to be a certain way because of the place that I grew. Yeah. And if 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 uh, you know obviously I'm not if if somebody ever found out that you know in my circle of friends that are that are made of all all races, I spoke a certain way. Right. Like it wouldn't affect me as much as it affects other people because of of, of, of whatever. But. You know, there's who said some somebody said out there is like it sucks that somebody out there right now just tweeted something without knowing the one day that they were gonna become famous, yeah, and that that's gonna ruin their career. <sighs> yeah, it's crazy. They dig up all kinds of old tweets and think about it. Like when they're trying to find old tweets, like couldn't they just as easily like go through like sift through yeah. videos or even just take something that you say like really out of context, yeah. like. You have to be really careful with what you say online because it's forever. Yeah, it just happened to to uh, to Tom Syndicate. Really? What happened? Uh, the, I don't know if it was the Washington Post. Or the New- uh, look, I, okay, the, I don't even know what what it was, but right. uh, they went. They they reached out to him for to for him to explain what he meant by using rape train. Oh my god! Okay, because he used to like, but think <laughs> yeah. about five, seven years ago. Yeah. When he was doing the like yeah, yeah zombies the, the live zombies. commentary, yeah. he's fired up. Right. At that time, yes, rape is wrong and it should Terrible. be punished. To yeah, we get it. But back in the day, like it, it, with with the mentality that was back then, it was just something that people said. No, it was something I said in a live comp too. Like recently, I was going through like a, a Modern Warfare three live commentary, and I like someone had linked it to me on yeah. Twitter or something. So I was like, oh, let me see what I was like. Yeah. And I said like, get yeah, raped right. to yeah. somebody right after I like murked them and I in my in my heart like because it's 2019 or I guess it was 2018 at the time but I was like oh my god I can't believe I said that like yeah. what yeah. but at that like at that time like that was just kind of gamer speak yeah. I mean I don't think it makes it right but it was just uh, kind uh, of like of course not yeah but but that's the sort of like, like so anyway they reached out to him and then Jeez. try to they try to say hey we're gonna release this about you using this word and uh, we want to give you the opportunity to, you know, blah, 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 to defend yourself. What? And then he's so like, bad. he's like, I'm not replying. Not only did he not reply, but he made a video about it explaining it. And not only that, but he warned other YouTubers. He's like, hey, just so you know, there's a publication out there that are, are trying to get you to to explain yourself from way back when. The amount of shit that I did as a kid. Think about this, okay? In my youth, when I was 16 years old, 17 years old, like literally in my youth, I used to spray paint on other people's property. Yeah. Would I do that today? Absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. I common sense, right? But I was a I I, I was a dumb kid. Yeah. That, that 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 just happened to spray paint on shit. And it wasn't like I was defacing like, you know, town property it was like trains and underpasses, yeah, but it was like, still not my property. Okay, it's still illegal. It's still wrong. It. Right? But if I if somebody came to me and was like, oh, you know, did you do this? Yeah, I did. I'm sorry. You know, what are, what are you going to do? I was yeah. I'm a, like, people go through these phases when they're not the people that they are or were, and that's okay. People should have the look. There's there's certain cases, obviously, I'm, I, I, and, and the, the fact that I have to explain this next part baffles me. But I'll do it anyway. Obviously, there are certain things that you should never, ever, ever oh, do. Yeah. It is inexcusable. Yeah. Right? If you were a super racist way back when and you said, you know, 
fuck these beaners and they should die and they should stay. Yeah. I get th- there's no excuse for that, mm-hmm. right? There's no excuse for that. That that that's inexcusable, right? But there are things that you usually like. Yeah, I used I used rape to say that I beat somebody in a game. Yeah, and at the time, you know, obviously, not no, it's inexcusable. Rape is wrong. Agreed, a hundred percent. It should be punished to the fullest extent of the law. Yeah. Period. But you have to put everything into context into in, 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 into how you grew up, you know. Yeah, it's, it's very just, true. It's, it's just not not a not something that I'll ever you know truly and and again you know like well why is this okay and not that mm-hmm. you know why can why why is it okay for you to say you know what I was young and I used the word rape by playing video games and not this guy who used to be racist but now he sees the light of day and he isn't you know yeah. which again that also could be like hey you know maybe he isn't maybe he wasn't yeah I think like nowadays like everyone has to be really careful with what they say because online is like screenshot video that goes up someone could take like download it even if you take it down like you just have to be careful with what you say but it didn't used to be that way you know you could kind of like even just twitter like back in the day like everyone was kind of toxic just yeah. saying crazy stuff and how stuff has evolved is really interesting to me because it feels like there's almost people being outraged like for someone else's behalf yeah like like someone might say like i don't know racist to mexican like like slang or something on Twitter, and then some white guy will be like, "That's not right." Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's people get like mad. I think people just look for reasons to get mad. I'm not saying that you should be racist. I agree. But yeah. Yeah. No, I, I understand. The fact that you have to even explain that, though, yeah, it's dude, annoying, it's, isn't it's it? 2019. I have to explain everything. Yeah. Even no. like the thing we're talking about earlier with the inclusion. I'm like, people are gonna be so mad at me because I know like people like in in my community they're like super stoked on the on you know just the inclusion and yeah. putting it out there no yeah. matter what yeah yeah and i don't think that's necessarily the right way to go yeah. but but like anything else everybody's entitled to their own opinion yeah it's true it's like it's, it's what i call friendly fire yeah you know what i'm saying yeah because sometimes i disagree with you know some of the political stuff that goes on mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm disagreeing on my side of the right. of the equation not on the not on the you know american side of the equation so i don't know it's it's uh it's treading as carefully as we have to in this day and age and look it's not hard because you know if you if you do right at every single turn of 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 everything you're doing and you're not a negative mean ugly person that just wants to destroy the world then it shouldn't be as hard for you to think about like oh i shouldn't say this yeah just 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 be considerate for other people and like have empathy i think is really important on social media like if you don't then you kind of do get some of the crazy stuff like that. But even, like, comedians these days, like, they have a hard time making jokes. Like, people say, oh, yeah, it's the golden age of, like, comedy. Everyone's getting all these, like, Netflix specials and all that. But really, like, if you say one wrong joke, like, you're chastised in front of everybody. And it's an interesting yeah. time. Comedians, do you think that they have the freedom to to make jokes? Yeah, I think so. I mean, to an extent, like, there's, like, I don't think using hate speech and, and not kind of... yeah. I don't know how to intertwine a hate speech into a joke, but if you're just using the hate speech just because, then that's not funny. Like but you have to be the most clever comedian yeah. in the world to be able to 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 make some of that happen. Um, who was it? I don't remember, but it was it was uh, Ricky Gervais. Mm-hmm. It was uh, Seinfeld. It was uh, Chris Rock, and those a redhead dude, old dude, older guy. Uh, Louis C.K. Louis C.K. Oh yeah, okay. And they were doing this this one thing where Louis C.K. is like, yeah, I used the N word like on stage all the time, as a as, as a shock. And then he's sitting right next to Chris Rock, mm-hmm. and then Chris Rock is like, yeah, well, you know, blah 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 blah. And and the, the fact that he said it so freely, I was just like, you, 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 oh, you, I saw you, you can't about. you can't do that. But then yeah. Ricky Gervais repeats the word that he said mm-hmm. because it's in, it's within the conversation. Now, obviously, Ricky Gervais is one of the most common sense people I know, and I, I look. He's an evolved human to where race is not a thing for him. But even then, I was just like, oh my, oh my God, holy shit, like, oh shit. Yeah. Right. And I grew up in a in a in in a, in a high school where it was like blacks and Mexicans were like just like this. Yeah. Well, when I grew up, because the original when I first got there was like blacks and Mexicans against each other. And then we yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. And I was just still just like taken aback by, by the by the hard art. And I was like, what the fuck? And Chris Rock is sitting right there. Yeah. And and I'm just like, I'm like, I I'm still not okay. You know, just because he's there, I'm still not okay with it. And you can tell Seinfeld was just like, what the fuck is going yeah. on, right? I think I saw the clip you're talking about. And he was like, oh my gosh, get me out of here. Yeah, the, the thing is, is like you have to be the most clever of comedians to be able to pull that 
that that joke off. Yeah. Right. So, in, in my opinion, if you're clever enough to 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 pull off the joke, so clever that it fits within the joke, and you're not just saying it for shock yeah. value or because you're telling a story, then sure, comedy yeah. can 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 get away with it because of, of that. But if you're not, you should. Nah. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of like the shock value comedy, but if you can like, it's almost like if they're able to intertwine it into a joke to the point where like the people that the joke is against can be like, oh yeah, that's funny, that really yeah. does happen. Like that's the type of reaction that you should be like shooting for, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I used to watch a comedian called Carlos Mencia. I yeah. Don't know if you're, and I went to one of his shows and he and he said the, the N word with the hard R and then immediately said, it's like, he said, well, if you are a this or a spick, blah, 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 blah. And it wasn't clever. It was just telling a story. But uh, a, a black couple that was there got up and laughed. Okay. And he yells at them and is like, oh, yeah, you know, you're offended by that. Why don't oh, you go yikes. to, you know, uh, a place like Pakistan where they take your rights away and blah, blah, blah. And I, and, and I was thinking, I'm like, I'm like, man, I don't think that that, 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 that no, fits. That right? doesn't. So I, I completely was with them leaving and, and, and going off on, on the thing. I believe you said something to him. That's crazy. Yeah. I, like I was the, just like, I was like, no, let them leave, man. It's like, one thing if they like heckle him immediately yeah. and they're like, hey, you jerk. Like, yeah. then yeah. Again, this was like in nine, this is like 2001, maybe. This so, was when it was like more okay to be wild. Too. Yeah. <laughs> well, more okay to be wild. But even then, I was just like, uh, like, oh, man, you I don't know if that, if that, if that fits. <laughs> But I don't know. I, I I do I do think that we live in an age where, you know, the outrage is mm-hmm. a lot easier. And I think that some people just do it. When people defend Mexicans, some people and I've caught them, I feel like they're doing it just so they can so they can say I'm not racist. Yeah. Like, I feel better about myself. Yeah, I feel, I feel better about myself. <laughs> yeah. and, and and look, they might have some genuine um, you know, beliefs and genuine care for, yeah. for for that sort of thing, but there's other ways of doing certain things that don't, don't necessarily you know. It's like people that donate money mm-hmm. for charity, and then they they're like, yeah, I donated for charity. Yeah, like, like, like you're just doing it to get props instead yeah. of just doing it for doing it. Yeah. Um, anyway, I think we got super political there, Ash. Give me some. This is, that was this awesome. Is this the most like political you've gotten on the podcast so far? I think so. Have is this it, Maddie? Probably, and I feel like we're pretty tame. Yeah, no, are we you, were. Are you ever gonna have Hutch on? Is I am. He, is I, he on I've your been list? trying. Last time I tried to get Hutch on, I was in LA, and I was like half an hour away from him, and he said, "He said, uh, no, I got." Uh, he just like he's busy. He, he, yeah, to for his friend, you know. I'm trying to make him famous, Hutchy and this Hutch. is what he does to me. I'm no, I'm kidding. To- <laughs> I'm, try- uh, I'm kidding. No, I, I I don't know if it was busy or not, but you know, Hutch is Hutch, and I, I love him dearly. He'll, he'll have to get on here eventually. Oh no, no, I no, that's that's a, without a doubt. I want to do it with Hutch. I want to do it with Diesel, and then I want to do it with Diesel and Hutch, Dude. and then I want to do it with Diesel, Hutch, and and, uh, and Fuez, and really well, have Umu, it have like a, a whole yeah, Umu vibe. Have, have amazing podcast. Uh, but anyway, Ashley, thank you so awesome. much for thank you so I, much I, I for hope that this is the last time that that you uh no, I'm da- I mean, I'm, you visit. I'm like right over there. I'll be cool. here all the time. Very cool. Um, next time, next time though, I want to do like a like an Ashley uh, Ambos and just like have a little bit more like a content more creators yeah. kind of little. Vibe. Yeah, sure. I'm down with sure. that. Anyway, uh, I hope to one day be on your podcast. Yeah, uh, Power Don. That's uh, that's on your channel. If yeah, you guys I'll have... invite you when we get it r- back up and running and kind of yeah smooth it out. I'll yeah, yeah, yeah. Send you an and that, that's right now live on your channel or on. Um, yeah, it's on my channel, and then I think like when we do come back, like when I say rebrand, I want to just make sure it like goes like like yours is available everywhere. Yeah. I want it to be like that, so it's easy yeah. to listen to. It's really easy, and I can help you. Okay. Uh, if yeah. you have any questions, now that I've been doing this for eighteen whole episodes, Dang. and I'm able to syndicate to not just YouTube, which is where these lovely people are liking. Right now, they just like the whole bunch of them just like the video but also on every single audio platform that matters we're talking about itunes google podcast spotify stitcher uh soundcloud like all of these places by the click of a button and it's done it's done and if there's one thing i know is that there is such a need for more podcasts that i always encourage people i've reached out to every single creator of content that like uh for example uh room on fire Mm. is like this counter-strike sort of sort of group of creators and it's just casters like Moses, uh, all these people, yeah. right? And, I, and I'm always like, come on, man. Like Richard Lewis and, and Thorin, they're always doing that. Uh, I want to have Thorin on the podcast. He's very... That would be cool. You know, and I want to have that, that sort of open conversation. And you, look, look, if you guys liked it, awesome. If you guys didn't, I understand. Okay, it's not, not for everybody, but I would like to have, you know, gamer-centric talk with gamer personalities, but talking about for a segment. 
Talking yeah. about uh, uh, real world shit that matters. Yeah, like pop culture, just whatever. Like, kind yeah, of I just think that there's that there's room for more. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Ashley, thank you for tuning in. Or do we do that? Again? Anyway, Ashley, thank you for stopping by. Thank I appreciate you. you. Uh, as I always say, oh, one quick thing before we go: six hundred seconds is a podcast that we release every single Wednesday. And it's not a podcast, it's more of a conversation that has nothing to do with the eavesdrop podcast. A lot of people are confused and think that 600 seconds is a uh, a recap like of this podcast, but it isn't. It is a standalone piece of content that you guys should check out. There's a link uh, to the 600 second podcast uh, playlist if you guys haven't checked it out. Uh, obviously, thank you to our sponsors, uh, Seagate. And uh, yeah, Seagate. Thank you. Yeah, and also Mac Weldon, as I said, if you guys want a tremendous shopping experience, picking up some underwear, pajamas, I mean, you name it, I already said it, okay? Just go to MacWeldon.com and at checkout for 20% off, use code eavesdrop. And of course, Mint Mobile, as I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, three months for $20, you get eight gigabytes of 4G LTE nationwide. Uh, again, you just got to go to MintMobile.com forward slash hacks and then fill it out and get started. Anyway, Ashley, thank you so much. I'll see you uh, hopefully soon on some piece of content that we'll create for the Optic channel. Thank you for tuning in, guys. If you guys enjoyed it, please remember to not leave without leaving a like. We'll see you guys on the next one. Good. Bye.